Hello all, Alison here with a few minutes of fun with collage composition. I mentioned when we were flipping stencils the other day how I very often work in pairs and series and trios and it's one of the reasons I, I love it when I've got a pair of tag backgrounds that are paired, complementary. So these are the ones we flip some stencils, you can go and take a look at that video uh, if you missed it. But I've ended up with a pair of tags that are clearly work together. And then what I love to do is work with some very simple bits of collaging with ephemera, maybe some die cuts. Um, very often natural elements come into it. So I've, I've thought ahead a little bit about what I might want to use on here, but not fully. So you're going to be with me as I go through that process. And just talking a little bit about how I like to balance that game of working with composing the elements and making sure that I've got a lovely conversation, I guess, going on between the two tags. But the first thing I wanted to do was just, just damp down a little bit the manila of this this tag colour that I've used. They're, they're plain manila tags that I buy in bulk. Um, and so what I'm going to use is just some gesso that's a, a big tub of gesso. It, it doesn't have to be golden. You can get all sorts of makes of gesso. Oh, look, there go all my die cuts caught on my fingerless gloves. It's it's pretty chilly today here in the Czech Republic, so I've just got a little bit of extra. And I'm using a, a just a small cutout piece of natural sponge to add this because I, I like how it gives me a lovely random organic texture onto the tag there. As it dries, it, it will lessen a little bit, but you still get that kind of lovely textured appearance. So I'm just gonna add that and just sort of a little touch of it, softening the edge of the tag as well. And then I'm gonna mop some of that up from around there and do the same thing on the other tag. So it's just a little, always a balancing act, always what I do on one tag kind of happens on the other one in a slightly different position or a slightly different uh, amount. So I'm just creating that connection between the two of them. And yeah, it's just knocking that manila back a little bit in this section so that those manila flowers get a chance to shine. Otherwise, what my eye is, is drawn in sort of equal measure to the whole of the tag as opposed to letting those flowers have a chance to sing about spring to us. So I'll pop that to one side. Best to put it in water fairly soon so that the paint doesn't dry on there. I'm, I'm just dipping it into my water jar just off camera uh, so that it stays nice and moist and then I can wash out the paint and then I keep that nice spongy texture. So that I'm just going to give a quick little dry with my heat tool just to allow me to move on quickly. I could let it air dry, that would be fine, and do something else in the meantime. But we're here, having a few minutes of fun, and so in order to take just a few minutes, we need to speed things up a little bit. Uh, I don't need it bone dry, but uh, just so that I'm not getting it everywhere and all over everything as I do it. It doesn't matter that the tags are curling up. One of the things I almost do, always do with my tags is mount them onto scrap cardboard later so it just gives them a, a lot more body, a lot more sort of presence, but also a lot more durability. So there we are, just softening back that background and ready to play with some collage elements. So lots of what you can see here are Tim Holtz bits of ephemera. I love the photo booth snapshots. I've got some little packets of ephemera. Uh, I've always at this time of year, which is spring when I'm filming this, well, it's it's winter turning into spring, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, so I've almost always got a bunch of the wildflower dyes cut and ready to go. Although on this one, I did cut some specifically for this that, that I cut out of, again, from the flipping stencils section. That was the number stencil panel. So I've cut some of those, uh, I've got them ready to go. And yeah, I'm just gonna have a play. So I, I was having a look through the photo booth pictures earlier and I think I, I always wait for them to tell me. I kind of look, I try a few out on the positioning uh, and, and today it was these two that, that wanted to come out and play. And so in that balancing act, 
positioning them, those flowers are up, so this portrait can go down. Those flowers are down, so this portrait goes up. Or if I wanted to kind of embed them into the patterning that we've got going on, but that's a bit of a shame because it's it's covering up a lot of <laughs> those lovely blossoms. So I think I think I will go with the balancing act of up and down. Um, and then what I also quite like is to have some sort of background panel, maybe butterflies. Oh look, alphabet's quite nice in there. Again, that's that's quite large, quite chunky. Mm, not quite. Uh, what about this here in this pocket? Um, I'm working with browns and neutrals along with these spring greens. Again, just because those are the colours around me at the moment in the Czech countryside. Yeah, so so here's another thing I very often like to do when I'm collaging a pair of tags, is I'll, I'll make one piece of ephemera do service on both tags with a simple snip of the scissors. So on this one, it's going to tuck behind her in that direction. And on this one, it's going to tuck behind her in that direction. So again, I've got that matching or complementary bit of composition going on. It's time to trim off the edges, I think, of these photo booth snapshots so that I've not got any extra framing that I don't want. So I'm just taking off the edges around the actual photo. And I'll do the same on this one and try and get it all on camera this time. <laughs> Take off those edges. No, I said I was. It's because I'm trying not to land all these snippets of paper right on top of the tags because I don't really want them there. So my habit is just to get them off to the side, out of the way. So that's my sort of first, first positioning of a bit of collage composition and from there I can start to build a little further. I'm, I'm quite taken by the idea of having, yeah, definitely the die cuts, definitely the die cuts. Hang on, so let's, let's just have a little play with some positioning. This, these, as I say, wildflower die cuts are just delightful and so I tend to I tend to cut them out of any painty papers I've got hanging around. Or sometimes if I'm working on a particular project and I want them in a particular colour, then I'll I'll create the background for that. What I'm doing at the moment, sorry, fell off camera again. So I'm just pricking out the little decorative details. They, they're so detailed, these dies. They're absolutely delightful. And I've cut one of these from the front of the paper and one of these from the back of the paper. So they... They face in different directions, if you see what I mean there. So again, that gives me a chance to be balancing the composition of where I'm placing them. They're going to echo one another. Quite like the idea of, yeah, maybe a little bit of overlap. I think I want more than one flower for each of them. So yes, the mathematical ones are going to come into play, excellent. This one needs to go behind the photo, otherwise we're going to lose the whole of the photo. Little bunch of flowers over there. Little bunch of flowers over here. What do I want that one? <laughs> yeah, I did the same with this. So I cut from one direction and then cut from the other direction. One from behind, one from the front, so that they fall or sway or scoop in different directions. Yep, that's quite pleasurable. Maybe a little bit of greenery to pick up those greens in the background. Oops, stay up, right, stay the green way. Have I got another of those? Yes, I have, excellent. Greenery in that direction, greenery in that direction. Yes, I quite like those little gatherings. Uh, and you obviously are gonna get to come over there because we don't want to lose you, hidden behind all the flowers. And then the other thing that, if you know my work, you will know very often arrives uh, when I'm creating tags is uh, maybe a dried flower stem or two. Let's have a little snip there and see how you... If there are extra bits that nature has given you that you don't want, a pair of scissors will very rapidly deal with that. 
and that warm neutral is just nicely echoing the warm neutral that I've got in this background panel so that's that's working quite nicely for me I think mm, yeah let's try this one I want a nice longish stem but I don't need all those flowers so again I'm just going to take off some of nature's abundance and that one fell off <laughs> fine gets me down to two which is what I was after that's going to be a bit long for the tag so snip off the bottom you can hear these are these are aquilegia stems um granny's bonnet it's also known as or columbine I usually empty the seeds out for replanting that one's still got a few in not to worry that's extra extra beauty for the tag <laughs> we get seeds starting to grow okay so that's that's looking quite nice to me I've got I've got them echoing each other I've got on this side those flowers get to happen against the empty background which is quite nice and I've still got lovely blossom showing here on this side those flowers get to happen against a nice flowery background so that's also pretty uh, I'm enjoying that I think what I'll do is I'm going to glue down the background ephemera but not the photo yet so that's still going to give me room to play in terms of where what goes in front and behind with the photos and the flowers I'm just giving these a little edging with some distress ink just finishes finishes things off nicely uh, gives them a a look of ageing, a look of distressing, but also just that bright white outline that you might get from having cut it will be less in evidence if so. Uh, so just a little bit of glue on the back of there. And what I tend to do is not glue right to the edges because if later I want to tuck a little something underneath, uh, I'll still be able to get it under the edge. So I don't have to finalise all my decisions right now about extra little labels or extra little wording. So just that little balancing act of those, just the displacement. If those tags are sitting next to each other, one slightly up, one slightly down. Got a little bit of sliding time, might take you a little bit further up. And this edge is a little crooked, so I'm going to trim that off, leaving that edge straight. Uh, you can see it's sticking out that side of the tag. So, time to get our flowers to behave a little bit. I think we might have those two over the top, which means you need to go down first. And I'd like that flower head nicely catching that empty space there. Again, with these, I tend not to glue the whole thing. I'm just going to get enough glue on to hold it down. If I were sending all of these through the post, then um, I would need to be more careful with how I'm gluing things. Make sure things are fully stable and sealed and in position and not going anywhere. The other lovely thing about these Thinlets dies is they have these beautiful, delicate stems. So if you want to sort of bend them around a little bit, they'll, they'll usually play ball. Uh, how is she going to go? She's going somewhere there. So it's just keeping an eye out that you're not covering up all the possibilities for where things can go. That's going to be quite nice sticking out over the edge there. I like that. And I might send this green stem up in that direction. Good. So that's going down next. Nice, fragile, leafy stem. And again, I'm, I'm just touching it with glue where it happens. This uh, Cosmic Shimmer with its fine applicator is really useful when you're working with delicate things like the flower stems. It's not available everywhere, I'm afraid, so you'll you'll have to locate your own favourite glue. Let's pop her in place again, because I think when I glue that flower, that's going to go over the top, like so. So I'll pause and get some things stuck down on the complementary tag, so that we're making sure, again, that that conversation, that relationship between the two tags is continuing to happen so if you pop out of the way just for a little bit yes catch me talking to the paper doll to the photos and to the paper dolls it happens all the time uh, and as i said they also very often tend to start to tell me stories as i'm working with them i know it sounds crazy so i've got that one going over the edge a little bit on this tag so i'm going to I'll encourage this one 
to go over the edge of the tag a little bit on this side. So it's not the same flower doing it. It's a variation on a theme. And let's pop this green stem down. A little bit of glue. Just touching in places just enough that it's going to stay put. Send that up through the center there. Just want to avoid that because I want to put something through that little top part. So she's going to go there, she's going to go there. And this one, oh look, that leaf is annoyingly going to hit her right in the eye. <laughs> That's not very friendly of you. So maybe what we'll do is have you slightly to the side. I quite like this flower head loose. Ah, so one of the things I might want to experiment with now is where these are going to go, because that could affect what I'm going to do with this, which might be, yes, to put it over the top of the real natural elements, which is going to give me a bit more dimension, which is something I love. A bit more elevation. Yeah, I'm enjoying that quite a lot. So I'm going to glue these down next. And with these, the main place you want to, you want to just try and identify where they are hitting the tag, because that's where you're going to need to glue them. Oh, look, no, she should have been next. <laughs> now watch how we can hold everything up with one hand while we pop in some glue. She's going down next, over to the side a little bit, so it's gonna give my flowers more room to play. So I've just identified the places where this touches the tag so that I can get the glue to a place where it's gonna be useful. Kind of halfway up the stem and always on the flower heads. And then this one is just gonna balance on the top. So again, identifying where it's gonna make contact. It's gonna to touch here and it's gonna to touch a bit further down. Going to create a bit of texture and dimension with those flower petals and pop that there. So it's balancing over the top of my aquilegia stems. So same game over here. Let's remember we want you first of all. And again, just that balancing act. I've got a margin of about three quarters of a centimetre there. So I'm going to create a margin of about three quarters of a centimetre here. So that again, we're creating that relationship of the collaging. We're going to be popping those down pretty much straight down, I think. And this one over the top. Yeah, that'll be pretty. I can see this one's got a bit of petal hanging off, so I'll just get rid of that. So again, just identifying where these make contact with the tag. And it's again, the flower heads and then sort of about halfway down the stem. So popping the glue where it's going to be useful. If you get glue in other places, not to worry. It's all gonna dry, translucent, transparent in the long run anyway. So it's not a problem. That's shadowing her face a little bit. Not, not so keen on that. Going to take that up a little bit. And now I need some more glue because it's come off on the photo and I've wiped it off with my finger. But this is how we roll. If it's not working, change it. It's paper for the most part and seed heads now. Paper and seed heads. Yes, see, and that just balancing on there. So again, it's making contact with this bit of this flower stem. And then I'll take that through there and a little bit further down the stem just so it can catch where it needs to. That one at a nice angle and a little bit of dimension in those petals. So the best thing to do at this point would be to let these dry fully so that those flowers and flower stems are nicely firmly on there before carrying on with anything else. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let those dry. Uh, I might help them along with the heat tool, but I need to be a bit careful about not setting fire to the seed heads. <laughs> And I'll be back shortly to show you the finishing touches. 
So these flower stems are fairly firmly adhered and I'm just going to do a last little bit of playing with some really tiny ephemera. So these are the Tim Holtz snippets. Uh, there are labels and then these tiny uh, botanical and, and glorious little uh, nature labels, all kinds of colours and shapes and sorts. These snippets ones are, as you can see, all of a slightly longer format and they're they're just lovely finishing touches to add a bit more detail uh, a little bit of extra something to what's going on and you'll see here this is this is why I don't glue down right to the edges because this allows me to be able to tuck tuck these little labels underneath if that's what I decide I want to do I'm mostly looking for neutrals because I don't want anything detracting too much from all the other lovely things going on. Uh, a little bit of extra detail maybe in there. Mm, that's too square, don't like that. Oh, what about this one? That's maybe a better one to go in down there. And then there are these lovely little round ones which just give you a different, a different little thing going on. So we might have one of those there. And uh, we've got another, oh, look, there's a little diamond. How about a little diamond for you? Lovely, and it's also got a slight pale blue tinge to it, which is which is really nice for echoing other things that are going on. Not sure about that one there. So I might pop that up here, in which case, conversationally, I sort of want to move this one down here now. So I tend not to glue down until I'm moderately happy with where things are. This one, again, it's a little bit deep for where I'm putting it. So I'm just gonna take a little snippet off the top so that I get that slightly lower down. Yep, so far so good. Might put those in place before I lose them. So again, out with the glue. A little bit of this one. Oh, hello glue, have I already? Surely not dried up. I've only been here a couple of minutes. <laughs> so that one's going just as a little label at the foot of the photo. I like to not line up my edges so that there's a step, uh, a little bit of angle, a little bit of extra space at the edge so it's not perfectly lined up. Off kilter, off centre, um, pleases me generally much more than completely lined up and angular and square. I, I love that little diamond. Can't see what it says on it. New York it says on it. And that one there. So that's the little balancing act. She's got a diamond, she's got a circle. Nice. So this one is going under here. And if I can get it just tucked under a little bit, that's what I'll do. Or oh, tucked over a bit, in which case I could have left the top on, but not to worry. It's paper. <laughs> it's not It's not going to get me put in prison because I cut a piece of paper up that didn't need to be cut up. And that one I think also actually is quite nice just over the top. So these are the decisions that get made in real time. And then I had thought, actually, I'm, I'm just looking at, just looking at potentially, hoo, hoo, hoo. see, here's going to be another cutting in half. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to use half of it on you, just in there, and half of it on you. So I know that they've got a, a shared piece of, another piece of shared ephemera in common. And it just needed that little something extra in at the top edge of that cluster, that little collage cluster, and a little something extra in the bottom part of this collage cluster. So that's going under there. There we are. So I hope you can see how those two balance each other rather nicely. I had thought that I was going to use some rusty wire to wrap them. I think I might prefer using 
some natural twine. I think the rusty wire might overbalance things a little bit too much. Hmm, I did well saying that. I look at it and I do quite like it. Yes, rusty wire it is. Now, I don't want to cover up all my beautiful labels. It's going to be rusty wire to hold the flowers in place. It's going to, on this tag, go down here. Just going to do a couple of wrappings. Watch out with rusty wire. It, it's probably advisable to use gloves if you're unwrapping rusty wire. I, it's not fingerless gloves, proper gloves. What I have done is I've made sure any cuts and abrasions are covered up uh, before I play with the rusty wire. Oh, it's tangled. How annoying of it. Let's get that out of there uh, and just undo it. Come out. Thank you. So with this, I'm just going to, you can see all the rustiness coming off there. This is, this is genuine rusty wire. It's the real deal. Um, you can find it at some craft suppliers. Uh, just, just do a Google on craft wire, rusty craft wire. You'll track it down. But I love its kind of rustic grunginess. So it's something I use quite often, particularly when I'm working with a slightly dimensional collage like this. So three little wrappings and then just a snip at the back. And again, if this was going somewhere special or going off to somebody, I would make sure I fasten that down. In fact, when I mount this on card, that will cover up those rusty wire, those pointy edges that could cause somebody damage. And then I'm going to do the same on the other one. But as you can see, I don't I don't want to send the rusty wire at the same height. I want to have this continued balancing conversation. So this rusty wire is going to hold down the flowers slightly higher up the tag. Again, just bending it back. Round it goes. Again, trying to avoid covering up my beautiful labels. I spent all that time arranging. Round it goes. You can cut this in advance if you know approximately what length you need. Uh, six times around the tag, or six times the width of the tag, because it's three times at the front and three times at the back. Uh, or you can, like me, just make a big mess on the craft mat with all the rusty bits. There. So that's kind of holding down the tag at that side. And then the name of the channel is words and pictures and that's because my creative life has always been balanced between words and pictures for most of my creative life it was on the words end you can find out lots more about this on my website which is alisonbomber.com if you're interested but whenever i've got pictures i tend to want to have some words so i've just got these tim holtz small talk stickers around and i'm just going to have a quick look and see if there's something that jumps out for me Yes. <laughs> yes. In fact, those two at the top of that first page. I think it's start doing things you love and it's live your dream with passion, which seems to be stuck behind the other one. But that's all good. That's because I had the other one out and decided, oh, no, what about? And so the adventure begins. I like that. I like that. And so the adventure begins and start doing things you love. I think you get the adventure. I think that's you. And I think you get start doing things you love. So in terms of where that one is going to go, I don't want to put it straight across the flower head. She's fine for positioning language because she's got this lovely space down below. So this one, hmm. It might have it might have to be even lower. Yeah, that works as a balancing act. So the adventure begins and start doing things you love. Again, I might just give them a little touch of inking around the edge, just so it allows them to both blend in with the other things that are going on on the tag and pop. And what I will do, these are adhesive. They have got sticky backs to them, these little word labels. But I tend to like to give them a little bit of extra help, particularly if I'm inviting them 
to become a bit of a curved banner over the top of these stems. So I'm going to give them a little extra glue. You see that lovely pop of dimension on that banner there now. So same over here, either end, little bit of glue, and I'm putting a little bit in the middle as well. So if it ends up touching the flowers, it gets a little bit of support from them. So make sure yours is higher up, but also gets that lovely little curve on it. Go on, stick down. I might add a safety, not a safety pin, a clothes peg to help that stick. No, it seems to be happy now. There we are. So that balancing act of compositional collage just gives you that relationship, that conversation between the tags. It's been slightly more than a few minutes of fun today, but I think when a project is asking to unfold, I like to follow where it's going to lead me. So although I thought this was going to be two photos, two flower stems and done, it turned out to be a little bit more than that. It turned out to be some sponging and more ephemera labels and some natural flowers and some words to go on top. And if that's what is unfolding on the craft mat, I like to follow that instinct. So do stick around for a little montage. I'm probably going to put some fine twine into the top of these and then I'll show you them in their absolute finished state in a little montage at the end. Thank you so much for stopping by and for your support of the channel. If you've enjoyed this, it would be grand if you could hit the thumbs up button. Please leave a comment if you're inspired to. And if you haven't subscribed, it would be wonderful if you did. Let's take a look at these tags in their finished glory. Happy crafting all.